all the things we've we've so far programmed made our program look a little bit like spaghetti codes and it's still the case so basically we've now solved the fact that we have an executable or the main uh, function is very readable this uh, header file is perhaps also readable we know that, that we have certain functions if we comment this this is also kind of fine but in terms of data that we use we basically use a whole bunch of uh, public variables or you know, public uh, uh, global variables that are accessible for the entire program. This has multiple problems. For instance, if we have in our main function, we want to use uh, the, the, the uh, character C, just like in line 5 here, for instance, this is not possible because this is already a global variable. Um, or this will lead to problems uh, because it is a, a global variable. The same for all of these. So if you want to, from the um, fr from a program programming perspective, deal with this, you have to somehow uh, compress this together. And this is exactly what we can do with a structure. For instance, for instance, we could do these food coordinates or the coordinates of the worm. We could wrap these together into a structure. Now, we won't do that uh, straight away. We're going to first define a class of type worm that does kind of the encapsulation of this data, the, the position of the worm and the behavior of the worm. Because that is the second part. We want to make sure that no one outside our little library or a little module here sees that our worm has length 10, for instance, hard-coded. Uh, or that these coordinates are called X and Y. You know, nobody needs to know that. They just need to know that uh, a worm needs to be drawn on the screen and a worm can be moved around. And this moved around is the second part. Those are the functions that you can do with the worm. So, the answer for that is that we basically start with a class instead of having um, uh, uh, a bunch of variables that are accessible to everyone. And a class is basically usually defined like this. So just like a structure, you can also define a class exactly like this. So in one line, you basically say we are now starting the definition of a class. The name of this class is warm. And what holds this class, just like what holds this structure with a bunch of variables, we can then start defining here. Now, what is different from a structure, however, structure we know that everything inside the worm can be immediately addressed. So if we then later have something that uh, we can define as such as this, like for warm worm, for instance, and then we uh, define a, an object worm of class warm, or let's call it W1, so an object W1 for uh, of class warm, then later we can say W1 dot, and then for instance, X, um, x1 and this way we can access the second element so not the first the second element of the x array in our war this is something we want to avoid um, and the way we do that is by saying we want some private uh, variables that we'll usually put at the end um, and these private uh, variables are exactly what we had already so for instance our array um, of integers x and our array of integers y, both of them of size 10. And those are the coordinates still of what we had uh, before of the war. Now, nobody can do w1.x. Then it will basically give an error because this is now in the private parts of warm. This is only actually relevant to the person that is editing the warm class and not to the person that is using the warm class. And this way, lots of errors can be avoided. If you have public, then you have, if you have private, then you have also public. And in public, you basically define what the worm can do. So in this case, what the worm can definitely do is, um, for instance, move around. So in this case, we, for instance, have something that could be a function. Um, in fact, we already have a function, right? Um, Oh, we don't. Or draw warm. Boom, boom, boom. Uh, we actually have user inputs. I would say we there was a good uh, a function that we can perhaps later on uh, change to move our warm around. For instance, what we could do is we could say we have a function that uh, gets the character that we type in on our keyboard. So it says left, right, that's A and D, up, down, W and S, for instance. Um, and according to that, our worm is completely recalculated. 
Uh, a second function could be draw, which basically draws our worm. I don't think we need any any um, arguments for that function. Both of those functions, I would say, are still uh, don't need to really return anything. We could later return an error, for instance. But to keep things simple, I would say we could still keep those as procedures. So what we've defined now is a class worm, which is unlike a structure because it does not only have private data parts, which nobody can access apart from these two functions over here, but also it has functions that are also attached to the worm. And just like you had, uh, you can have worm w1, um, and, and then you can deal with uh, things. You basically can execute functions that belong to that worm. For instance, you can draw the worm like this. In that case, the worm will be drawn on the screen, hopefully, if we program everything correctly. Or if we say somewhere in the loop, w1.move, uh, and we basically um, get the character A, so it will move to the left in that case. So the, all the segments of the, of the worm will be incremented and the head will be moving to the left. Okay, and this is the nice thing about a class. The user only does this and does, need to, does not need to know about all of these coordinates. Other things we probably also will have are, for instance, lengths. Um, so we, we might also keep the length of the worm also here as a particular variable. Also, that is something that the user of our, uh, of our class that is using this object w1 can't, ac can't access. Okay. This does not mean that, uh, that there cannot be any variables here. So we could also add some other uh, uh, integer over, over here, for instance. And that we can actually access right here, just like with, um, with, the, um, with the structure. Right? So this is, in a nutshell, what, our, what a class can be doing for you. So, and then, this is basically how this will be used, for instance, in the main function later on. So we don't need this here. Uh, we don't need most of these functions, or we're not going to know, uh, need most of these functions. And when the people want to use our class worm, they can immediately see straight away we have a class worm that is that has this name, and these are the things that I can use from this worm. You can add here also, you know, some, or you should add here some uh, some comments on move the worm, for instance. And here, draw all segments. Oops. All segments of war. Um, and that becomes immediately clear then what people can do with this worm object. If they define a W1 as a class worm, then they know immediately I can use this move function, I can use this draw function, and, they, and everything else, everything that is the real data, is completely hidden. And that is kind of the power of using classes or using object-oriented programming in general, that all of these nitty-gritty details are kind of none of the business of the person that is using this class. Okay? Right. So later we're going to uh, implement also this. We're going to uh, um, implement exactly this. And then we're going to also see what the advantages, the further advantages are of doing this versus what we had before, just having a long list of functions and some global variables.